The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. BronxNet. Your voice, your views, your vision. Good evening and welcome to Bronx Talk, the Bronx's flagship television talk show. We're on live. We will take calls tonight, so please weigh in at 718-960-7241. You can also email comments to us at bronxtalk at hotmail.com, and we'll read those on the air during a future edition of our program. Well, over the years, we've had ongoing dialogue about what helps children learn and develop. Tonight's guests have seen plenty of evidence of that in their comic book program called Kids Comic Con. It works for young people in a variety of ways. Tonight we'll meet with them, we'll watch young people actually creating comic book characters in front of us. You can see them right there. And we'll talk about what is making the Ministry of Education in the African country of Senegal so excited about Kids Comic Con that they'll be rolling out the welcome mat later this year. Welcome back to Bronx Talk, Bronx Comic Con, comic book. Writer, I mean, it's hard to say, Alex Simmons, always great to have you, Alex. Thank you, Gary, always great. glad to be here. And uh, also uh, we have Gene Adams from Bronx Community Bronx College Community with College. us, and great, we're going to talk about community. how the program extends into that. Alex, before we begin, we, we showed a quick uh, a moment of the, the young people drawing, so tell me what it is that those folks are going to be doing throughout the program. Well, throughout the program, you're going to see um, the lovely Susanna uh, Roundtree over there and, and the, the lovely Ray Felix <laughs> <laughs> working... <It's> slightly <laughs> less lovely. <laughs> yeah, Ray truly, it's the, it's the beard. Working with three young people on uh, the kind of projects, workshops that we tend to do. So the kids are going to be creating their own original characters, but they're going to do it based on themes, uh, fantasy, like superheroes, that sort of thing. Also, science and also history, because comic spreads across the field completely, and you can use it to support academic uh, training and Maybe learning. we can get another shot of them so that people can see exactly what mm -hmm. we're talking about uh, while we talk with Gene. Gene, what's the connection now with what Alex is doing in Kids Comic Con and Bronx Community well, College? Um, well, five years ago, uh, Alex and I met, and uh, we were both looking at education through a different prism in terms of we believe that education should be experiential. Young people should have an opportunity to, to learn and play and use their hands as well as their minds uh, together. And uh, we've decided on the idea of our first activity was a, a workshop on careers in the comic book industry. We thought that we may get 25 or 30 young people. 150 showed up. Oh, my. Uh, so we knew we were on Don't to forget something. the teachers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then well, the teachers were saying, what a great motivation. Yeah, and they standing right. room on. Uh, not yeah. just teachers, but also college faculty mm -hmm. were, knew also that there was something here. We weren't quite sure exactly what it was, but we knew we were on to something. And then eventually uh, we, we got our heads together and produced our first Comic Con at BC, a uh, kids' Comic Con at BCC. And we had an audience of over 700, almost 800 children and families. Talk about the mission of BCC and why you would do right. this. Well, uh, again, my area at the college is academic affairs, and I have the uh, leeway of ha having a very creative portfolio of activities that I'm involved in that looks at education and community slightly differently, and we're able to enhance the college's value because we offer a very wide variety of activities and programs that families can engage themselves through uh, that support learning, while at the same time it breaks down the mythology of what college education is. Mm -hmm. uh, with the Kids Comic Con, we were able to really do that in a very uh, visible, uh, visual way, in a, in a way that really talked to young people and, and children directly. Comics, mm -hmm. whoa, drawing, art, technology, 
all in the same package. Literacy, Literacy. discovery, observation. Well, Alex, um, let's let's take one step backwards now. What is it that you do? You go from school to school with this program? How does this program work? There are levels to this program. There are workshops that we do in school or after school programs. I've taught them for years and have begun to team up with people like Ray and, and Susanna and others who either didn't do it before or have been doing it for some period of time. So there's those individual programs and now several of them through Kids Comic Con. But then also during the convention itself, which comes once each year, we have all day from 10 to 6 workshops with professional artists that the kids get for free. So they can come in and they can meet the artists who draw the comics that they love and read, but also learn techniques from them, learn how they create these characters, how they create backgrounds, what kind of reading and research they had to do to be good at what they do. It, is this grossly extracurricular or is no. there the way that this could no. be curricular no. and and I'm gonna let him answer first because my man Gene is jumping out of his seat right now. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> but Alex, so you start with that, and then Gene, you well, get into I mean, it. it's organic. It's totally organic. Yeah. I mean, in order for a child to want to become something, they have to know what are the possibilities. You have to imagine possibilities, and then you start to see where all these other pieces fit in. So you want a child to be able to read? Well, then, well, why bother? I like playing. I, I'm going to be a ball player. I'm going to be do No, you know what? What if you have to manage your money? What if you do this? So when we work with comics, a, we, we let them explore their imagination, we validate their imagination, we then give them core skills that they can use, and they start to realize, oh, structure, okay, yeah, I do have to figure out how to put this comic together, oh, I do have to figure out how to research this, I do have to figure out how to do my homework, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So no, it's all organic. Mm -hmm. uh, Gene, you, you Real were going to respond. I mean, all the things that we talk about in, in, in education, around critical thinking, about learning a, a process, about teamwork, about all those those qualities that we that we, you know, talk about. Kids have an opportunity to do them. We've also done a number of professional development activities with teachers to begin to work with them in terms of how to use this medium across across the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Well, this gets into the next question. Again, I don't know which of you is best able to address that. Can you fit this into the existing curriculums? Or is it really a shoehorn thing where you've got to convince uh, teachers, principals, and others that this can actually help children learn? A politically correct answer would be, of course. <laughs> All right. We but, don't want politically correct. But an honest correct. answer is it only, that works when the artist and the teacher are really about that. You know, if, uh, there are a lot of people, a lot of the teachers I work with, they admit, right, I, I don't read comics, I don't know anything about them, but I'm willing to see how this works and how this will help my students. That's great. When you have that, then absolutely it works. And, and uh, the teachers have enough, enough flexibility within their programs to do it that? It depends my on the schools. No, don't. it depends on the schools. It depends on where they are. It really does. It's like anything else. There are some places where the administration will support outside the box, arts and education, so forth and so on. And there are other places where they're teaching straight to test. Mm -hmm. uh, Gene, uh, let's talk from an educational perspective. And I, I mentioned before the show, and our viewers know that a little while back we had education through music mm -hmm. here. And they talk glowingly about how children learned math and how children learned science and uh, they learned discipline and all the other uh, all right. wonderful things that we'd like to think we're okay. teaching them. Does this program develop similar kinds of skills right. in young people? Right. The, the playing field is very wide. We're using comics in this particular case. There are a number of other activities that can be used the same way and get the same results and really get hit at the core learning uh, strategies and needs that young people have. But it's really on the adults to be able to see themselves as educators and that enlighten and understand what right. sort of a tool this is. Exactly, and exactly that's what it is. It is another tool. Uh, I said at a conference that I spoke at, I said, you don't build a house with just a hammer. You know, this is another tool for the toolbox. Oh, uh, so who's going to Senegal? Well, I, I, we're, I, we're I, hoping I, the two I, of us here, if you want to come along, you know, that's fine. Right. Ray uh, Felix is going to, you And, know. and wh why, why are you going and explain some of that program? Well, it sounded I, so exciting when you were telling me before. The, the joy of it is, again, contacts and connections. Through Gene, and he'll talk about this in a moment, and he's had this wonderful relationship with a school in Senegal called the Senegalese American Bilingual School. And we had a conversation with the founder of that at the beginning of the year. She knew what we'd been doing with Kids Comic Con here in New York. And I should say, there's also a roadshow version of this. We've gone to Buffalo, New York. We've gone to Miami with this program. We work with thousands of kids. So she knew about this, and she knew that her 700-plus students in Senegal would benefit from this, as would her teachers and her staff. So we started talking about what are the possibilities of bringing us over. And we're clear on absolutely we could do this, 
there just had to be uh, a way of raising funds to make it possible. Is, is that fundraising effort still going on? Yeah, the fundraising effort is going on. There's, there's a twofold scenario. The one that we're doing right now is the, uh, a fundraiser we're doing on Kickstarter.com, which is a fundraising... K-I-C-K, Kickstarter.com. Kickstarter.com, okay. yes. It's a fundraising website, and people can go on there, go to our page, and I'll explain that in a moment, and pledge a certain amount of money. And if we reach the goal that we've set, then we receive that money. If we do not reach that goal, we don't receive anything. So you can get to us by going to our website, kidscomiccon.com. Okay. And right there on the home page, there's a, a link takes you right to our page. And you can see a video on what we do and what we're about and what will happen in Senegal and Kids all of that. Kids Comic, another C, comiccon.com. That's yes. KCC, and they've got that uh, right on the uh, screen. Oh, right on the screen great. Right Excellent. Now, so yeah. Can, so they can just click right like. on the hyperlink there. You know, Gene, it, it, leave it to me to ask the tough questions, but. And, and Alex and I, frankly, were talking about this over lunch the other day. Uh, it's ironic that the Senegal picked up right away on the value of this, and yet you're still in the process of trying to sell this to the various powers that be here. Is that, is that an accurate yeah, representation? Yeah, it is. I, I think, uh, well, the Senegalese American Bilingual School was started by an uh, American living abroad, um, where is she from, by the way? Uh, from uh, Baltimore. Okay. And oh. uh, I've worked with the school now for about 12 years, developing all types of projects. We have taken uh, groups of 20 or so uh, young people from here in the Bronx and, and, and Harlem there. So they're ahead of the curve. Uh, let, let's take another look over there at what, um, uh, what the young people are doing. Uh, if, if we can get uh, a shot of that table. Alex, um, what, what are the, the skills that young people learn from these kinds of things? Well, I mean, I, we break it down very simply. We first identify the six key jobs to creating comics, and, and that would be uh, writer, penciler, inker, uh, colorist, and letterer. So they understand that there are various staff positions that are involved there, and then they learn to do these skills by creating their own individual characters. They learn about you know, copyright and protection and so forth. So right now, these young people are functioning as a penciler. The writer in them has created a character. Sometimes an artist and an illustrator will do that. But they've created a character. They have to think about not only the look of this character, but the background of this character. So right now, do, they're do doing a lot of work. Do you have to teach them um, how to be good artists? I mean, do you have to be a good artist? My, no. I mean, in terms of you know, skill levels, you, know, you draw the way you draw. You know, each person has their own style. Each person has their own skill level. If they love doing this, they grow with it. But we don't measure them that way. We and, just want everyone to enjoy the creative process. And, and at what age does it work best? Or I found even it works for a at guy all like you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, friend. Yeah. We'll work with you later. But um, we've had, you know, we've worked with children in elementary school, middle school, high school, and college. So it works across the board. You, you brought us some nice things to show. What, what, what are well, we looking at? Here? One of the things that Kids Comic Con will take to Senegal with us is um, our. Color of Comics exhibition, which is uh, an exhibition that celebrates the diversity of characters of color in the comic book world, whether they were created by artists of color or not. So we have various examples, like here is a Native American character and an African American character in the West uh, from a series that was done by DC Comics. And, about how long ago? Uh, this, uh, boy, I don't know, this is going back about four or five years. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff Marriott was a writer, and there were several, uh, several artists on that, on that particular piece. Mm -hmm. But we haven't, you know, again, we have the example of here's a representation of these characters in this piece. A lot of times you'll hear people of color saying, you know, there are no blacks, or there are no this, or no that. And they're right, there's not enough. But I'd rather come from the position that we already have some out there, and let's build on that. If, if I recall, in one of your previous visits to our program, you were one of the innovators in this sort of thing. And of course, uh, everything good <laughs> comes out of the Bronx, and so we had it. Uh, <laughs> Three chairs, right. Um, <laughs> I, I, w I created a character called Blackjack, which is an African-American soldier of fortune in the 1930s. And it, it got great response. And yes, it convinced a number of people that not just people in the hood would deal with a, a book that has character of color as a lead. So that was, for me, a breakout. We got emails from Copenhagen, and I don't know, a lot of brothers were hanging there in Copenhagen. So, you know, but well, it was fun. I, I'm only saying, you know, it's just so easy, as you say, not just people from the quote-unquote the hood. It's just people yeah. like these kinds of things, and there's no reason why somebody can't identify with a superhero. Or you create a fantastic you character, you let right. somebody's imagination go, and then you find an audience for it. This is a kind of a different look than the, than the other. Middle so Eastern. Is this? this is the 99. It was unfortunately a short-lived series, but it's all based on Middle Eastern mythology. 
So these were superheroes who have powers that they receive from these jewels. There's 99 jewels, and each jewel has a certain ability. And these are superheroes that are going up against supervillains. But again, all of it wrapped around uh, the Middle East. And so I found that fascinating, and it's something you didn't see very often. So mm -hmm. we pulled that forward. And, and this one on the bottom I love, this is Tales from Riverdale. This is obviously Archie Comics. Yeah, one of America's well best-known iconic uh, teenagers. And this was when they introduced, this is Fernando Ruiz, uh, who introduced um, in this story uh, Raj, who is an East Indian character. So this was when uh, Archie, uh, the series began to start bringing in more diversity. And, and about how long ago was that? Uh, this, is, uh, this was 2008. If well, I remember right. And, and one of the artists of um, Archie Comics is with us tonight. Yes, that's, and, that's and Susanna. So Susanna is going to be, so we'll get a chance to talk with her. Right. Um, and of course, uh, I, I guess we should mention that uh, Archie Comics featured the Bronx Zoo a number of years ago. and we featured Well, they that also the have a number of other things. We're doing a whole new series now with bringing in a whole new slew of kids coming in with different backgrounds and ethnicities and so forth. So it's, it's really mixing it up now. Mm -hmm. It's becoming more intriguing. Okay. And, this, and this almost, let, are you going to show me like from one to the other now? Well, what do we got here? I, go what ahead. you got here is an example of student art, which I feel is, is just right, right on the right path towards a professional existence. This is a young lady um, who was one of my students right. uh, for several years, and she, not only her, her illustrative skills began to just blossom, and you can see where her imagination really took off, but she also incorporated the lettering in an art style that, that complemented the flow of lines in her illustration. This is a this is a wonderful piece, a wonderful piece of artwork. How how old and what grade? Uh, she was uh, 18, 17. She was 17. 17. So this is a high school. And how many years had she been with you? She'd been with about three, four years. Three, four years, and this was really an afternoon once a week after school program. Okay, let's do this one. Same same and student. Go same student. Just people. showing you uh, another page. You know her storytelling ability and how her eye works and her graphic design. I mean, her focus is this little girl at this piano, and that's what your eye is pulled towards. And then I love this isolated piece here. But this is her starting to look at breaking the lines of the panel and some of things that we had discussed. About how much direction did you have to give this person to get to this point? What I did was I gave her the freedom to explore. I would comment on her ideas, I would show her some tricks, but I was not directing. This is letting them grow. Okay? Okay. All right, I'm going to actually move over here uh, with um, our uh, young people, and we're going to start here. Oh, wait, i got to grab the microphone. I've, I've ruined the whole staging of the whole show here. <laughs> All right. Um, and I'm going to say hi to Ray Felix. Hi, Ray. How are you? Greetings. Ray, just a little bit about your background. Uh, well, I'm a comic book artist, and I'm an art educator. I've been teaching for the Board of Education for... 15 years. Do you, do you teach comic book art at the, for the Board of Education? Yes, I teach both comic books and fine arts. And, and uh, in one school, or you go from school to school? I've gone to different schools, but right now I'm at Wings Academy in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. How does it work? I mean, is it working out well? Is well, basically, you want to get an introduction of what's the human head, the poor portions of the head. And when you get into comic book storytelling and, you know, the, com the, the body, you know, the supermorph of re regular human bodies and stuff. Is it a hard sell to educators or they, they pick up well, right away this is a good thing? Well, I don't think they understand it, so they just let you do what you have to do. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing. Um, now, what are some of these things? Come on with me over here. What are some of these um, uh, pictures here? Uh, you know, and what, what can we learn and understand from these? Okay, well, you see that you have this uh, dramatic setting here with this. These are just like uh, character sketches of like character design, and you have the the young man, and he has the girl. It's almost like he's creating a scene or right. like, like uh, evoking an emotion. And then there's this another type of emotion with a young girl and this insecure little child. Like, and what does it take? I want I want to move over here, and yeah. uh, we'll see our first. Uh, I want to introduce him by name. It's Marlon Castro. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what does it take to get Marlon to the point where he's able to do this? I don't know if we can get in here and see some of the, um, mm. uh, some of the things that are on there. Well, it takes imagination, like Alex was saying. You're allowing the kids to explore what's already in their mind. This is something that it's not like we're, we're kind of like guiding them to understand and explore what's already there inside you know, their own fantasy imagination and giving them the room and... And, and the opportunity to explore that. And so 
you can talk with them, give them some certain ideas, give them topics. Like each kid here has a different topic mm -hmm. that they're working what, on. What is the topic that Marlon's been working he's on? He's working on a sci-fi theme, so mm -hmm. he's coming out with like little sketches of sci-fi. There we go. Marlon, you want to quickly tell us what it is that you're, what you're making? Uh, basically... Uh, hold the paper yeah, down sure. so they can see oh, it. Right. There we go. Okay. go ahead. Uh, basically, I guess you could say he's the mechanic of a, a certain spaceship, and this would be like the window. I'm going to try and hold right. that up so people could see. Right. So basically right. everything that's outside the car, I guess the spaceship car, the planets, uh, the satellite, it's like basically they're in outer space. And uh, he's basically a mechanic for all these little robots down here. Now, now is this the so. kind of thing that you've uh, drawn before or is this? Um, not, not necessarily, but uh, he gave me a theme and I just, I just put it down And you just there. went with it? Yeah. Um, you love doing this? Yeah. Has it made you a better student uh, even, even in other uh, things like um, math or science I mean, or anything if, like that? If other subjects could follow this. Um, if there was some way we could follow the same, I guess, uh, method of teaching as you can through art, then yeah, I guess. Uh, I guess the answer definitely. is yes. What, and how old are you? Uh, 19. And what grade are you in? Um, right now I'm a sophomore in college. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, great work. Thank, thank you. you so much. All right, let's uh, bring on Susanna Roundtree. Hi, Susanna. Come on, Hi. step in. How are you? Good. Susanna, just a little bit about your background. Now, you um, are an artist for um, uh, Archie Comics? I work for Archie Comics. I've been an artist there for a few years, mm -hmm. and I've also been working for a few years with Alex doing the Comic-Con workshops and mm -hmm. working with the kids. What, what's great about it? How much you can really inspire a kid it, when you get in there and you work with a kid that might be a little bit shy or a little bit withdrawn and you see them really open up and really find that their ideas are welcomed and and can be worked Do with. Do you see that frequently or infrequently or every now and then? Tell me about Every time we do a workshop. Every time every we do time. a workshop. Every There's time. There's proof folks. Ladies and <laughs> gentlemen, it works. <laughs> um, now, so now let's get in here. Jan Boy is uh, in here. and. and He's got a whole different thing going on. Now, so. he is working with a more fantasy theme, and we just let him go nuts. And he <laughs> is... He's not going nuts. Can I take this for a second? Can, let, can we, he, okay. You know, he won't let the paper... He won't let the paper go in. Yeah, that's going to be on this camera here. This yeah. is an amazing tableau he's created. It could almost be a one-page comic strip gag of a dragon destroying an entire town because someone in this town tried to steal the eggs to make scrambled eggs for breakfast with. And, and how, uh, you know, I want to ask the same questions I've asked some of the others. You can, you can put that down. Thank you. How, thank you so much, Jan Boy. How, how difficult is it to get him to the point where, as you say, he goes nuts, where a young person will sit down and have the freedom and ability to do that? Well, in this case, we gave him a piece of paper and a pencil and said <laughs> something in the fantasy theme, please, maybe a dragon, and this is what we got. So it, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't it was all very, that dramatic. It was very easy. Uh -huh. uh, okay, now this young man here, let's, we're going to move down. Um, let's, uh, let's see um, what you've got. Uh, this is Nicholas Fenderson. What does uh, Nicholas have here? Now he's been working with a more historical theme, um, and perhaps maybe historically uh, based on literature than real history. He has a wizard that is bringing uh, the dead to life with lightning, almost in a Frankenstein manner. Now, did you tell him that this is what we were doing? Like, what did he say to you, and at what point did this storyline come about? Now, we worked together a little bit more closely on this one. Because I know Thank that you, <laughs> you got it. The young people, they just give me my paper. I got to <laughs> draw something. Here. We worked a little more closely on this one. He uh, was not quite sure what he wanted to do, so we went a few. He started working on like a wizard character, and then we talked together to decide what kind of powers he might have. But always with the idea of developing a, a reason for everything. No, nothing just in there to make sense. It, everything has to make sense. What What are the goals for these young people? In let's move toward the middle here. We can see some of the, the nice artwork here. Mm -hmm. What are, What are the goals? What do we expect that that they will get out of this long term? Aside from some of the learning uh, and developmental things. I mean, are there jobs? Are there careers? Or is this just kind of a nice hobby? Well, it depends. Uh, for me, as a child who is interested in art, it clearly became a career, as I now do work in comic books. But it doesn't have to be something to, that's going to be a career for you in order to be something that's going to bring you a lot of joy and give you a lot of options into other things. Mm -hmm. I think also uh, the notion of self-expression has to come Absolutely. out. Absolutely. For these young people, whatever they're, they're thinking about, what their fantasies are, they get to express them in some form. Mm -hmm. Um, what sort of guidance do you provide as far as a storyline? Or do you allow them to simply 
create the storyline? It depends on the individual need of each child. Some kids are ready to go with a complete story and an adventure, and I almost have to struggle to catch up. Other people are more want a little more guidance. It's you know each each individual is, brings something a little bit different to the table. Let, let me go, come back to Ray over here. Um, Ray, in terms of um, what you uh, try to explain, even again to educators, right? Um, what gets them excited about saying, you know what, we've got the pressures of having to achieve certain test scores? What gets them to say, you know what, this is really a good program? I think it's the results that they, you know, I think adults look at and, you know, the people mm -hmm. in the Congress look at. They're like, they're like, oh, this we, teachers, principals, they love to see artwork. They love to see the kids creating. They love to see them doing proactive stuff and learning, you know, like skills. I mm -hmm. mean, how to tell a story, how to lay out uh, a storyboard how to communicate their ideas, how to actually take their drawing skill and develop that, and, and about how so many organizing young thoughts. people do you work with um, every day, every week, uh, throughout the whole? Uh, well, I, well, last year, uh, last school year, I worked with 150, but I've worked as many as 276 in certain schools. So, mm -hmm. but uh, Wings um, Academy is a small, a smaller school. Okay, we put uh, the website. Maybe Alex and Jean want to come here. We'll just uh, kind of wrap up the show uh, with everybody together here. Um, uh, Alex, if you come on into the, the shot here. Oh, okay. Tell me a little bit about um, what what the future holds. Aside from the trip to Senegal, what is it that you well, are hoping to do? Well, Kids Comic Con is, is mostly volunteers and donations. So in order for us to grow and continue to do more of what we do, we need the support, which is another reason we're doing the fundraiser. So the fundraiser will not only help us with the Senegal uh, experience, but also will allow us to do better and more here in the United States. For instance, we were asked to go to Little Rock, Arkansas, Arkansas at one point, but no, no resources. There's nothing we could work with there, and people can't afford to just go and do that out of pocket and be there for that period of time. So we're looking towards building up uh, a treasure chest as opposed to a war chest that will allow us to do this kind of quality. We've, we've worked with, what, over 3,000, 4,000 sure. children over the years. Uh, I'd like to continue to do that and see if we can do even more. You know, I've, I've suggested this throughout the show, and that is that uh, if there were more resources, you could do more, you could reach more Absolutely. young people, they could do better. I mean, it would be win, 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 win. Across and the board. Do Across the board. Great. Yeah. I, I want to say uh, to Gene Adams, mm -hmm. thank you. Oh, so Susanna Roundtree, yeah, I thank you. I was going to thank Alex Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Alex Simmons. <laughs> and also to Ray Felix. And uh, to our uh, young, uh, wonderful artists, because this is really what it's all about. Absolutely. Nelson Castro, Absolutely. Jan Bue, and uh, Nicholas Fenderson. Uh, we want to thank you all for coming here. And why don't you, each of you, would you be so kind as to hold that up as we do our final? Would you hold your, he, he can't let go of that pencil. <laughs> all right. There we go. Folks, if you have further comments or questions on anything you heard on tonight's show or anything going on in the Bronx, then email them to us at bronxtalk at hotmail.com. And we'll read those on the air during a future edition of our program, Archives of Bronx Talk are available at blip.tv, just search for Bronx Talk. Now, it'll be politics, a lot different from this, on Bronx Talk for the next couple of weeks. Next Monday night on the 30th, we'll have the highly anticipated debate for the 33rd senatorial primary between Pedro Espada Jr., Gustavo Rivera, and Dan Patternacht. Then on Labor Day night, we'll have the debate in the 80th Assembly District between Naomi Rivera and Robert Giuffre. Bronx Talk Monday nights here on BronxNet Channel 67. Cablevision, Verizon Fios 33. Of course, we're here at 9 o'clock every Monday night. And uh, listen, the folks who worked on the show did a great job tonight putting all of this together. Thanks to producer Jane Filoro, director Michael Arias, and our cast of thousands who are up in the booth. And to you, good night. Thank you.